Hey, good afternoon. I'm David Reimer at the Texas Storm Chasers. It's the 8th of April, 2021. After a week of relatively quiet weather in the state, we are back to spring storminess. I'll be honest, it didn't look like we were going to be dealing with storms this afternoon. We thought we'd have to hold off until about 9 or 10 o'clock to 9 East Texas, but Mother Nature and the pesky dry line had a different idea. As you can see, based off the last hour of radar and the visible satellite imagery, we've had thunderstorms bust through the cap, and they have now exploded into severe thunderstorms. Uh, specifically, we are here to talk about two thunderstorms. Uh, left split and a right split. Now, real quick, I'm going to talk about the left split. This is a strong storm over Walnut Springs and Morgan moving up Highway 174 towards Rio Vista, Blum, Covington. Eventually, is going to cross over Interstate 35W near Grandview in about 45 minutes, so about 6.20 or 6.25 p.m., the potential for some dime-sized hail. This storm's not severe right now. The storm over Cranfell's Gap moving southeast towards Clifton and Valley Mills, yeah, that one is severe. Uh, this thing has become a full-fledged, angry, right-turning supercell, capable of producing at least golf ball-sized hail and wind gusts of 60 miles per hour. This is a severe thunderstorm moving southeast. Uh, let's see what they've got it moving at. The Weather Service has it moving east-southeast at about 25 miles per hour. And again, this storm is capable of producing at least golf ball-sized hail, and if this storm becomes even more rowdy, it could be even bigger in terms of the hail. So, uh, this storm is moving southeast at about 25 miles an hour. Uh, it, it doesn't take a scientist to realize what is southeast of this thunderstorm. Uh, those of you in Waco down to Hewitt, Lorena, Troy to Temple... Uh, it remains to be determined exactly where this is going to cross Interstate 35, but you've got a very angry supercell capable of producing some big hail heading your way. Uh, looks like it's going to be crossing Interstate 35 in about 1 hour to 1 hour 15 minutes. Exactly how far to the right of the mean flow or how far is it going to move, east, southeast, or south-southeast? If we turn this loop back on real quick, you can see it started out moving northeast, it split, and now it's turning southeast. If it turns south-southeast, this is going to be more of a threat to places like McGregor, maybe just east of Gatesville, to Temple. If it moves southeast, this is going to be more of a threat to maybe Waco, Lorena, and Troy, and McGregor, and Crawford. Y'all are actually kind of doomed, regardless, in terms of the angry hail potential. So that being said, the radar is estimating some big-time hail right now, uh, over baseball size. Hail melts before it reaches the surface, so at least golf ball size hail, but to be honest, this thing may be trying to make hail larger than the size of golf balls. You can see it's on the How Hard It's Raining mode. We've got a hail core right over Highway 22 in Cranfield's Gap. This is moving southeast at about 25 miles an hour, going to passing near or just west of Clifton, southwest of Valley Mills, hopefully, but could be taking a beeline towards Crawford, and if this thing turns more south-southeast, it could actually be a threat to Gatesville as well. I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to turn off the smoothing. You see this little line coming out of the thunderstorm south of Cranfield's Gap? Let me turn the telestrator on, and you'll be able to see it. This right here. We're looking from the weather radar in Fort Worth. This line is called a three-body scatter spike, or it's where the radar beam is being ref is um, I'm trying to explain this scientifically while not sounding like a complete doofus. Essentially, the radar beam is hitting so much ice or hailstones in the updraft, it is fooling the radar into thinking there's actually precipitation southwest of this storm. We call it a three-body scatter spike. It's indicative of the fact there's a lot of hail in this thunderstorm that the radar beam is hitting, reflecting going back to the radar, and the radar is misconstruing it. Regardless, this thing's got hail. Uh, this thing's a hailer for sure. We're not worried about tornadoes. We're not worried about anything like that. This is a hailer. So... We haven't heard any ground truth yet of how large the hail is, but radar is indicating the potential for at least golf ball size hail. This storm is going to be moving southeast at about 25 miles per hour. Eventually could cross Interstate 35 between Waco and Temple. We're going to have to see exactly the direction 
this thunderstorm moves, if it's going to move more south-southeast, it's going to be a threat to Gatesville, the temple. If it's moving more east-southeast, it's going to be a threat to places like Clifton, Crawford, McGregor, down to Hewitt, Lorena, and Troy. We do note also we have additional thunderstorms that are trying to bust through the cap. And these thunderstorms are north of land passes southeast of Event, or Vaunt, if you prefer. And you can see if these storms take off, too, we'll have to deal with the threat for some hail in portions of uh, Gatesville and Passes. So we'll keep an eye on those storms as well. But for now, the big, mean, angry storm with big hail is just south of Meridian, near Cranfield's Gap, moving southeast over Highway 22, moving down towards Valley Mills and McGregor. Uh, we're watching a left-splitting thunderstorm that is so far showing signs of weakening moving into northwestern Hill, southwestern Johnson counties, up Highway 174, Morgan, Blum, Rio Vista, towards Grandview. This storm could produce some small hail, some gusty winds, and some heavy rain. Uh, it doesn't look like it's trying to intensify, but if for some reason it did, we could see maybe quarter-size hail if it intensified as it moves towards 35W in Northern Hill and Southern Johnson counties. At this point, though, it is the right splitting supercell throwing the temper tantrum, and that's this mean, angry hailer over Cranfield's Gap, moving down Highway 6 near Clifton, moving southeast towards Valley Mills, and then eventually it's going to cross Highway 317 near Crawford and McGregor. Otherwise, it is a nice warm sunny day across the state of texas we are going to be watching for thunderstorms later tonight probably after 9 p.m in portions of east texas you could kind of see the boundary on radar from near tyler to kilgore to shreveport it looks like we might have enough upper level lift around 9 10 11 o'clock to fire up a few storms capable of producing maybe quarter size hail this evening late tonight in east texas they definitely do not appear to be on the par of the thunderstorm or the supercell that has fired up southwest of Clifton. But it looks like around Cranfield's Gap to Clifton, uh, the good potential for golf ball size hail right now. And this storm is eventually going to make its way towards Interstate 35 from near Temple all the way up to Waco, depending on how, if it's moving southeast or south southeast. Regardless, someone's going to get probably a nasty hailstorm in Crawford over the next 45 minutes, eventually crossing Highway 84 near McGregor in about 50 to 60 minutes. But we'll keep an eye on it. Again, we're not worried about tornadoes with these storms. Uh, we are keeping an eye out for the hail potential. Welcome to spring and April in Texas, folks. This is almost a daily occurrence. We didn't think the cap would break today. The cap broke today. Tomorrow, by the way, in case those of you who haven't heard, we're concerned about this scenario repeating, except farther north in the DFW Metroplex, and with a more volatile air mass compared to what we have today. So the potential for even larger hail, the potential for damaging wind gusts, and even the potential for a few tornadoes. And then tomorrow night, we're going to have a squall line move across northeast Texas with all modes of severe weather possible. So yeah, a couple of busy days in Texas, but the good news is the severe weather threat will shift east of Texas by Saturday. And over the next week, honestly, it's looking like a pretty cool wet pattern in terms of not really severe weather, but just kind of chilly air for April, and then uh, hopefully some rain chances. We need rain, so hopefully that'll happen. But we're going to keep an eye on things. Um, David Reimer with the Texas Storm Chasers. You can keep an eye on the sky with the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. You can download it in your app store for free. It's got interactive weather radar. You can watch our live streaming feeds when available and get notifications when we publish new blog forecasts. So we'll chat again in a bit. Otherwise, we'll be posting frequent updates on social media.